Guys, welcome back to Iris After Hours. We are still on the highest point of Mount Carmel, and we are here with our amazing guest, Karen <laughs> Davis. Karen, you and your husband and and Peter and Rita and a whole team of people, you built this amazing building here on top of Mount Carmel. Yes, yes. Tell us some yes, of your story. Yes. How did it happen? You were in New York yes. as actors on Broadway? My husband was an actor. My right. husband was an actor and director, professor of theater, worked with some very well-known people and was at like the height of his career as an actor and went home after having this big breakthrough and went home and, and started to cry and said, this doesn't, what does my life mean? This doesn't mean anything. And he began to search for God. And in the meantime, I'm from a Jewish family. My husband was not Jewish. And I was in New York uh, studying music. I had also studied art. So I was there because, you know, New York is the art capital of the world, right. art music. My brother, my brother lived in New York as a jazz musician. And I just, uh, but I was totally into the new age. And I, one technique after another just kept failing. And finally I came to the end of myself. And one day I just, I had no answers. And this name of one friend came to me. She was an actress. She was on Sesame Street. She's the funniest girl I ever met. Uh, she worked on Sesame Street, made Muppet characters. Yeah, and, yeah. and so that day I woke up and I, I just thought, oh. and her name came to my mind. And I thought, oh, I bet she has some advice for me. Oh my gosh, and, so you were so aware I, of that guidance already. Well, I knew her for a couple of years, yeah. and um, occasionally I saw her with a Bible, but she was like, broke every stereotype that I had of a Christian. And I'm a Jewish girl, you know, I did everything except Jesus, because Jesus is not of for the Jewish people. And we think of the name and Christians really as our enemies, so it was the wow. last place I would think. But I saw something in her. She had a joy. You know, we sang about the mm -hmm. joy today. There's so a river awesome. that makes glad the city of God. Whoa. And she didn't even have a boyfriend, and she had this joy. And that, like, really got my attention. It provoked me to jealousy, which wow. is what Romans 11 says Come the Gentiles the are supposed to do. <laughs> she absolutely <laughs> provoked me to jealousy oh with gosh. this joy that she had. And it was so different from my Buddhist friends, you know, my meditating friends. Like, you can't manufacture it. It was yep. so. And so I just, I knocked on her door. She lived in my building. I lived at 72nd and Columbus Avenue. Yep. And, uh, and, and so I poured out my troubles. And, and then she said to me, well, would you like to pray? And I said, okay, I've never done that before. And she led me in a prayer. And the first word was Jesus. So I said, Jesus. I closed my eyes. I said, and gulped hard. I said, Jesus. And then the next line was, I invite you into my heart. So I said, I invite you into my heart. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I had no idea what my sins were. I mean, and, and I said, I ask you to save me. And when I finished saying the prayer, I turned to my friend and I said, Camille, th this couldn't be the only way. And she looked me in the eye. She said, it is. And it was absolutely a spirit of revelation. You know, like Peter, the Lord said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Because you cannot walk up to a Jew, a Jewish person, and say, Jesus is your answer. Jesus, even <laughs> Jesus loves you makes no sense at all to us, you know. Yeah. And, and so, but I knew I was in the presence of truth. She puts a New Testament in my hand, Wow! and I had never opened it, never even considered opening it. And she said, he's in this book, and you take this book home, you pray in your own words. He knows everything about you. He will know how to let you know. This is without a shadow of a, do a doubt. So I took that book home, and I could not stop. I'm reading Matthew 1, the genealogy of Jesus. <sighs> It's all about, goes back to David and, <laughs> yeah. and Jesse. And it's written for the Jews. It's written it? for right. the Jews. It's written by the Jews. And, oh and, my it, gosh. and But as I start reading, and I couldn't put the book down, I would take it to work. I used to work, I was a shoe model. I a remember. French company. Yep. Yes. You knew me in New York. Yes, Katie and I, I knew each other. What's this story? What's this story? Years so, ago. Yeah. So let me just finish this finish part this, of the story. Finish so, this. Yeah. So, um, so I, I, the love of God began to stream into my life. Yeah. As I, as I was reading the word, and my friend took me to this revival that was taking place on Broadway. That's mm -hmm. where I met Diane Venora. Oh my and gosh, my husband was Diane. there, because an yeah. actor friend of his, it was all dancers, singers, musicians. So was he your husband model. then, or you hadn't met him yet? 
I hadn't met him yet, and oh. but I, I, I was older in the Lord. I was six months older in the Lord. <laughs> he hadn't gotten saved yet, but I remember some, an actor friend bringing him there, you know. And so he already knew Diane professionally, right. and uh, they were kind of, you know, in the same circles. And um, and so, but the love of God began to stream into my life. I, I went, I started to read the Old Testament, realized this is one book, this is one story, on, this is what on. it means to be Jewish. I never had any idea wow. what it meant to be Jewish because I did not experience God in the synagogue. You know? How ironic that yeah. reading the New Testament and then putting the Bible together made you fulfilled as a Jew. Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, for me, New York was the center of the universe. I never had any desire to live in Israel. I had never even visited. I was a New Yorker, the energy of New York, the creativity. Oh. I mean, that was my life and that was mm. my husband's life. And and uh, in those early days, I, I discovered the Song of Solomon mm. and I fell in love with the Lord and, and his love just washed over me and healed me from every broken relationship, all the wages of sin and just, and I became this single woman who was so happy. Yeah. You know? and, <laughs> I really, and, and in fact, the Lord set me free from having to be in a relationship. And, and it was like such a liberty I'd never known before. And then he brings this man named David into my life. <laughs> he had given me a black spiritual mother. I mean, it was like the Lord sets the solitary in families. That has yeah. been my story and my husband's story from the beginning is it's the reality of the family of God, you know, of the Lord putting together the one new man. And, and um, you know, so this congregation I was in was multiracial. And I looked around and I thought, where, where are the Jews? And my heart began to break. Oh, and in one goodness. of those, we had all night prayer meetings. And in one of those meetings, I remember being at three o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden I'm starting to sing the Shema, Shema Yisrael, like out of the very depths of my Inside. being. And oh God my started gosh, to download amazing. to me the grief of the Jewish people. And I'm experiencing the joy of the Lord. You know, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and the joy, but you know, knowing the Lord, it's, it's the power of his resurrection and sharing the fellowship with his oh, sufferings. So he started to release to me that grief. And in and, and that prayer meeting, he put a promise in my heart, I'm going to take you to the land of your inheritance and allow you to share this gift of my love with your people. Wow. And that was a promise. I had no idea how it was going to happen. The Lord brings this Gentile man named David Davis into my life. This is a whole nother love story that I don't have time in this little story. It's a great story, totally miraculous. How the Lord put us together. We weren't interested okay. at all. We'll come back and get that one. We'll have to do another sequel on that. <laughs> but, um, and so God had told him when he met the Lord, get on a plane and go to Israel. He didn't know why. He had grown up in, a, in an anti, like a Catholic, anti-Semitic family. So God started doing really? something very sovereign in his life. He got on a plane, goes to Israel. He had all uh, supernatural experiences, the fire of God coming down on his, in his car. And, and um, he was utterly chained, undone by the time he got back to New York. He had oh no gosh. idea that like just a few months later, he was going to meet this Jewish girl and marry her, you know, and oh spend God. the rest of his life in Israel. God sets, is God just sets stuff up, doesn't he? It's this is totally, just such a I mean, setup. I want to say to any single woman out there, just wait on the Lord because the Lord has something in store you can't even imagine. Come on, you know? good, take and, it, take And it. he doesn't disappoint, Whoa. you know, yeah, yeah. So um, then we moved over to, when David Wilkerson came back to New York City, uh, 1987, and we, my husband, who was like, really in theater, it was his whole life. He starts going out with teens on the streets of New York, praying for drug addicts and homeless people. And he would come home every Saturday, he did this, and he'd come home smelling like the, you know, the, the dirt of the street. And he was crying and God was changing his heart. And he couldn't, little by little, he could not bear actually to keep working in the theater because he was, and that we, we started going to Times Square Church, which was meeting in a Broadway theater, mm -hmm. which is where uh, he had actually gone there for the Tony Awards. And, and oh so he's gosh. seeing people come down the aisle that had just been on the streets, getting their lives changed in a Broadway theater. And, and then we what did, and then we did a production. David Wilkerson felt to do a drama in, it was a theater, so why not use it, you know? Right. And we did this incredible drama called El Shaddai that won 
song was the theme song. It was yeah. a big drama. He played Abraham, and he directed it, my husband. And I remember he, at the end of the play, he stood, came out in the character as Abraham, and he began to preach to the audience. And it, he wasn't acting anymore. And I, I was on the platform in the choir, and I'm seeing, it's like the actor died and the preacher was born. It was like this, you know, <laughs> I really believe that performance gifts are ministry gifts. God gives yeah. them as, as ministry. I mean, you were a ballerina. You're still dancing for the Lord, you know. <laughs> but it's it's all to glorify the Lord. And so the Lord, bit by bit, started to take him out of show business completely. And then we came to Israel for vacation. We heard about the drug problem and the Lord really gave us a vision to open a house for drug addicts that would be Jews and Arabs together. That's the powerful thing. Yeah. Whoa. That's not and normal. And that's, that's, that's where the congregation was birthed. Yeah. And we had, I mean, the guy, I, I just introduced Heidi, our, our bass player today. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He's still in the program. He, he was a heroin addict for 20 years, took himself off of methadone, saw the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. And he's a new creature. He's learning to worship now. Ooh. He prayed, played professional, you know, as a musician for 25 years. And God is just restoring him and teaching him to be a worshiper. Like we had the 12 stones around the, the yes. altar. I was saying to Heidi, it, it's it's. Those are, the, uh -huh. those are the living stones that God's restoring, and he's taking these broken people and making them into worshipers. Whoa. And uh, so the con we started a Bible study in the, uh, in the rehab center in the early days, and um, it started to grow and grow. Rita and Peter came, and Peter started teaching, and we saw that God was birthing a congregation. We had did, no did idea. People, did people get a bit confused that you had Arabs and Jews together? No, I think people were drawn to that. People, you know, people want, to, it's a, the Lord had said to us, this is going to be a testimony to right. who I am because we were seeing drug addicts and, and living together in the same house, getting saved, meeting the love of God, and then being able to love each other and mm. incredible, really be brothers in the mm. Lord. Supernatural. Yeah, yeah. And and I, people that, that were, were drawn to this. Also, we came wanting the power of the Spirit. Come on. And the holiness of God. Right. Whoa, yeah. That was really, combo. those were like the foundations of, you know, what was imparted to us from David Wilkerson and the uh, the gifts of the Spirit. And and there was a real hunger for this in Haifa. There didn't exist at that time, early 90s, or even a congregation like that in this area. And um, so, you know, the rest of the story about getting this building. But now, uh, and the Lord, you know, our mandate really is the restoration of worship on this mountain. And so we've really become a house of prayer. I mean, it's really... Yeah. Uh, we're eight, we're moving toward 24/7. The Lord is calling teams of musicians and worshipers and intercessors from the nations to join us here, and um, we're pushing back the darkness. You know, I mean, the power of the Lord said to me, um, He gave me a word when we realized where we were positioned. You know, position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And He gave me a word from um, Isaiah 42:10 that says, "Sing to the Lord a new song." Shout from the top of the mountains. We did that today. Come Sarah on. sang it out. Shout to yeah. the Lord with a voice of triumph. And the Lord said, um, and that that as we we shout and declare His victory, He will go forth as a warrior, and He will prevail over His enemies. Whoa. And so this is we this is how we're pushing back the darkness. And we've been doing this, you know, running the race with endurance and persisting and pressing in and proclaiming and and God is opening the heavens we, we just the rain is coming my husband passed away a year and a half ago but he held the vision he heard the sound of the abundance of rain he preached that message all across Galilee the, all the Jewish and Arab congregations for years wow. saying we, we need to hear God is going to move in northern Israel and so you know we we've been feeling the rain and the drops and he died a year and a half ago, and you know, it's, it's, the Lord says, if a grain goes down, it falls needs to, to go, ground, falls to the ground, dies. and dies, it will bear much fruit. And, and, the, the, he, you know, it's like he he died with the promise, and and the, but the fruit is coming forth. Come on, Jesus. And it's it's there's an anointing really over the whole congregation that's being released oh. on everybody, and to carry it forth, you know. And Sarah sang with me today, and it's the two generations together. You know, that's also the, my husband's message was the Elijah legacy of the Elijah Elisha working the transgenerational, uh, 
you know, working together. Yeah. So yeah. beautiful. So that was my five and minutes. You, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Yeah. I mean, it's so powerful. Just mm -hmm. um, also what we we saw with the kids here mm -hmm. and Rita. Come on, just run on in. We we don't. We're not a formal bunch. Come on in. <laughs> sit next to Karen here. Sit here. next to. Here. Yeah. Come sit. No, no. Sit here. No, no, sit here. They sit, heard from sit, me. Sit. They heard from yeah. Me. No, we want to hear from you together because okay. I feel like. <laughs> We're two Jewish girls from New yes, York. Yes, two yeah. Jewish girls. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now in Israel. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and and it, it's beautiful mm. because mm. you've worked together for years. Yes. Mm. And you really, when I when I look at you and I just look at this work over, I mean, over decades. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's seeing just your heart for him, for God, and your heart for the poor. And, and to see that you don't just care about the Arabs and the Jews, you care about whoever the Lord puts in front of you, mm -hmm. right? And you, you just carry God's heart. And I saw that, I felt, I felt really at home, <laughs> first for the worship, you know, we're, we're so blessed. But also when I saw you had these beautiful children. So mm -hmm. tell us just Your how story. both of you, like, how did that happen? How are these beautiful children? There's, there's, come on, yeah. come there's on one over mama, here. come over here. Let Elsa. me just, yeah. just go back and then I'll hand it over to Rita. Yeah. Um, when we started House of Victory, the um, foundational, the foundational scripture. scripture was Isaiah 58, right. you know, about 6, 7, and 8, about what is the true fast? Is it not to, you know, take the poor into your house, to clothe That's the right. naked and feed the hungry? And so it's it's been a, a core value of our community from the very beginning. And and so when we, but it was for men and it's still for men. I mean, that program is really still very much thriving, mm -hmm. but we never had However. a place for women. <laughs> and so when we acquired this property, Rita was carrying the, the burden to, to minister to women and children. It was totally a God <laughs> burden because, honestly, it wasn't something I ever dreamed about. I ever thought, oh, Lord, give me women. He just put it there. He said from Isaiah, uh, from Psalm 46, the Lord is my refuge and my hope, a very right. present help in time of trouble. trouble. And he was just speaking to my heart that, he is their refuge. And then we acquired these old buildings. And me, who never did anything in social work or caring for, I was teaching in university of communication before I came in. And he just said, care for the women. Right. We never hung out the shingle and said, we're doing it. <laughs> one by one, different women were coming. It women. wasn't originally Africans. It was originally Jewish yeah. and Arab women. Exactly. Right. crisis situations, right? E exactly. Mm -hmm. And we became known to some of the NGOs. Uh, we took a woman in who was a, a, really a test case here in modern slavery. And they just were here. And people knew we were doing this, but it was so low key. And it was just, you know, God's way of bringing oh, people one by one. And then, and then who'd come suddenly, reading? in a moment, the whole world changed for us. And in that moment, I got a phone call from the immigration police saying the first Sudanese woman had crossed the border from Egypt. And if we didn't take her, they would take her child and put the child in an institution and the mother in prison. This is 2006 when the Darfurian genocide was raging. And they said, if you don't take care, some of our kids just walking up. If he wants to grab a shot, they're coming. Come but um, Come on. he said to, uh, so the Lord spoke to me. Yes. And the Lord just said, this is going to be something. And it changed all of our lives. They, they brought them late at night from the border. The army no. would bring them to us. No one. Nobody in the country knew that we were taking in. The, I was working with the UN. I said, but how long are they going to be here? I don't know, six months. The man oh. who was running the UNHCR here and uh, the United Nations High Commission Refugees. I said, six months? Well, they kept coming <laughs> and coming. And finally, it did get out to the rest of the country about a year later that this was happening because in Egypt there was no more hope. There were some things going on, and the Sudanese who were living there who had fled the civil war that had been going on for 20 years said there's no more hope here. And some of them said to me, even some of the ones who came from Muslim backgrounds, they said, we, we looked around us and where do we go? Especially those who came from, from the Christian backgrounds. They said, we, we just looked to the promised land. They actually said this. Wow. They crossed the border 
And they came into Israel. Now, I can't say the story was an easy one. It's still not all these years later. Israel is a country has many challenges. And uh, here's some of our kids now. And uh, they're still dealing with what to do with these asylum seekers. These women are from Eritrea and Ethiopia. Um, during the mid, um, about 2010, 2012, the Bedouin smugglers began to take women into their camps in the Sinai and um, using them for terrible reasons that I don't, torturing, rape, extorting $35,000, $40,000 from them. And it really was an issue of human trafficking. Some of these women came out of that scarred and just, you know, torn into pieces by what had happened to them. And by the grace of God, we could take them in. We had w girls who, who were um, crossing the border, young girls who lost their mother, okay. shot at the border. And so this oh was something we never imagined. You just, you and just, we just worshiped and said yes, right? You just worshiped it. God and you said yes. You love Jesus and... Who you am I talking yes. to? <laughs> <laughs> Heidi, I have to tell a, a quick story. Can I? Sure. Absolutely. This is Yafet. Yafet's mama. We, we got a phone call about two years ago, but they had no place to live. And um, Yafet is a really smart boy, aren't you? And uh, we just knew that we could find him. It took a long time to get him into a right school. He's in a wonderful kindergarten. Oh. And, um, you know, they fight battles. They fight battles. I don't need to tell you with the mothers with depression because they're single moms. These are fatherless kids. And what greater gift than to show them the father? Come on. Show them the father. So in our first year, we were uh, dealing with a lot of violence. Um, because there is a spiritual aspect, women who've lost hope, and even from their own backgrounds, they saw so much violence. They mm. saw their villages burned. They saw things that unspeakable. And we had quite a situation here one, one day, and one woman actually came after me, and, and it was a very violent situation. And I heard that Heidi Baker was in Jerusalem, and I said, there's one person who's going to understand what we're dealing with. And I just needed to come and get some prayer. So I go into this place and they said, it's only for young people. <laughs> they said, you have to be under 35 or something. I was way over 35. I said, I don't care. And I'm pushing these kids aside. I said, she's going to pray for me. And you did. And it's all about hope. It is. It's all about hope and enlarging the ten pegs of a heart. And that's yeah. what he's done. And that's what you, wow. you, you just and you carried prayed him. For me. Oh, and I even love you. today you prayed. Because we look around and we know there's no hope outside of him who said, I've given you a future and a hope. Come Jeremiah twenty nine. And that's, that's actually the code. I'm telling the whole world. The code on our door is 2912. <laughs> but it's because that is the future and the hope. Yes, and hope. some can be resettled in other countries, but some may not. And all we can do is pray. And they, they know that it's only him. Whether they come to us as Muslims or traditional Christians or ones who have found the, the real source of life and the real source of hope. They all know that he, this is his house. Yeah. And he is the one who's provided the shelter wow. and the home for our little Yafet, yes, for our for little kids them. here. Wow. For Shuit, who came as the, the rockets were falling in the road a few, in August. She was pregnant. We got a call from the social worker. Can you take her? She came to us and had, where's your baby? She just had a baby with us. We've had over 100 babies born here. Really? Uh, oh, not here? Only I mean, one in my it. car. The rest oh, of them were born uh, on the way to the hospital or there. But, but oh, women who've come either pregnant or, or victims of, of situations that were, were ones they didn't ask for or ones that had no other place to go. So, it's, it's just, so we've seen a, a lot of babies. It's a city of refuge, isn't it? It's a, it's a city of hope. 
It's a place where people just feel love. They feel God's love here. And it's his heart. Isaiah 58. It's and not just words, is it? That's, words are cheap. Words are so cheap. And he said, if you have given unto the least of them, you have lived that. You have been our inspiration. Oh, you're so that if you've given to the least of them. And sometimes, you know, I don't need to tell you. You, you just... You just say, Lord, I need, I just need a download of that love that has to be the basis of everything we do. It can't be just we do it because you tell us we have to love. Yeah. Increase wow. my yeah. heart. Increase my heart. Enlarge, oh. enlarge, enlarge. Enlarge and enlarge it. Because there's no other way these kids keep coming. That's they, right. They will keep, they keep coming. coming. I mean, they will. There's no end. <laughs> and he keep he'll keep giving you more room. They yeah, and goodness. more more people to help from wherever they are, whether they come from Israel or any other place, they'll come because it's God's heart. And we have loved when Iris comes. Oh, We've had several you. groups from Iris, and they they come with the love. They don't have to like find it. Because they have learned love. They've Come learned on. It. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Us. We love you. We, we love, you. love you. And all I can say is we're just a little tiny grain in the midst of this, this huge work that God has. Yeah. Just a little, little tiny one. And we just need so many people praying all over for all the parts of this, this work he's given us. And we will. These, we'll commit these, to it. I mean, we're, we feel like the tidiest uh, ones, but we hey, we're going to pray we, because we need each other. Yeah, Don't absolutely. You think? Come on back, Karen. All, Let's have Karen come back. Other. And we are just yeah. parts of it. And we're so thrilled that you oh. came and celebrated today. And this guy, he's just... Come just, on, Natanel. What? Natanel? Elias. Uh, Elias. 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 Nothing else is brother. Okay. As you, you know, just as as we close, I mean, we could just spend days. Days. I, crying, we, we didn't laughing. No one wanted to leave. Yeah. It's always the bus, you know. <laughs> it's always the bus. Somehow we, we got a little car and we're squished in there with the suitcases. <laughs> so somehow we got to stay behind. But today it was the worship like nobody mm. wanted to leave. Mm. They were completely undone. And. I, I don't know. Did did all of this flow out of this intimacy that you have with him, that you have? Did did this somehow this heart for, for the hungry, for the broken, the despised, um, you know, the outcast? I, it does. I mean, um, Ezekiel forty seven talks about the waters that flow from the sanctuary, and it, it and it says. Um, and then along the banks of the of the river are, are the trees that have the healing for the nations. Mm. And it says because they are all drinking from the water for, that comes from the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. This is the source. The worship mm -hmm. is the source of the living water. That's mm -hmm. right. And our service has to flow from that. That is the foundation of ministry to the Lord. It is yeah. that intimacy. We don't just do works. You know, we it, it, it does. It's where we God releases his heart. I mean, I stumbled on what's now called harps and bowls because worship is becomes intercessory. Yeah. You know, and so I like to call it instead of saying harps and bowls, I, I usually refer to it as intercessory Intercession. worship. Mm -hmm. And and the God you know, you come into the presence of the Lord and then as we you know, you sang out with the mic today and we all sang out, Lord we you know, we wanna to touch your heart and we wanna mm. we wanna feel mm. the things that you're feeling and that <laughs> happens when we draw close to the Lord in worship. Mm. You know? mm. So it does. Yeah. And, and, and we have to continue to make this the foundation. You know. And if yes. he's if he's not like the center of it all, we just dry. Absolutely, we're That's dead. Exactly. We're dry. Dead and works. Dead we works. can't we can't keep loving with unless keep unless we keep getting filled. <laughs> right. I mean, it's it's oil. It's all about the oil. Mm -hmm. People <laughs> say, "How can you do this?" Or how? Like they're look, they're learning how to <laughs> do how what to Jordan fill. does. <laughs> but it's it's seriously, he's the source of yeah. everything and. As we love him, it's not hard to do what he asks us to do, is it? 
I mean, it can be painful, mm -hmm. but there's some kind of joy, joy in it. Joy the mm -hmm. obedience. Mm -hmm. Just saying, you're worthy. What else would I want to do yeah. But, yeah. but care for, for those you love? Where, wherever they are, we just love because he first loved That's us. Worship is loving God. Wow. Worship is saying yes to the Lord. Worship is, like we, we Sarah sang out today, stretch me out like Isaac on on the mm, altar yes. and 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 so the it's saying yes to the lord and then we can do anything for him that it's he asks us to yes. do yeah it's always yeah. saying yes yeah. mm. that it. song that that intercessory song was so oh, powerful and i I, I mean just we, as we were all flat out at mm -hmm, that point mm -hmm. but hearing that i i mean the literal presence of god just Mm -hmm. broke in yeah. the room stretch yeah. me out yeah and yeah. stretch yeah. me out yeah. and i was almost taken aback by some felt this joy but it was this joy of laying their life down and others were sobbing mm -hmm. and others were mm -hmm. silent mm -hmm. but it was just stretch me out god mm -hmm. whatever it takes whatever the cost i don't that's care it. That's mm -hmm. it. i just i want to completely die mm -hmm. to myself right and right. that's not a such a popular message no, but you know, I'm going to die to myself and I'm going to live to you. And it yeah. is stretch me out. That's you know, it. I wanted to share That's a testimony it. because, um, you know, you knew David. And, yes, and he was just him. an amazing man. I was a blessed woman to be married to him for yeah. 30 years. And when he became ill, I, I became his primary caregiver for 18 months. This mm -hmm. was just a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, actually. And, um, and it was like, I, it was just suddenly public ministry stopped. Yeah. And this was my my twenty four seven worship, you know, was serving mm, David, mm. and and just um, going deeper into the crucified life, you know, and and being and saying yes on an even deeper level, you right. know, and um, but that's what brings that's, forth life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Has birthed yeah. so much. So I learned, you know, I learned mm. what it is to worship when mm. it's not about singing a song. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I, I love to sing songs. I write songs. You're amazing. <laughs> but, yes. but, um, you know, when I was, I couldn't get to my keyboard. I was too tired to sing a song. I was exhausted. You know, but I was worshiping the Lord every mm. hour, saying, mm. "Yes, Lord, I don't know if I can do this another day. But so you're going to give me the strength, so and I'm going to serve my husband." And and that's. You know, you, you, this, I'm, I married him because you asked me to marry him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was out of my first love for the Lord. I'm going to serve this man. Yes. You know, and, and we do that till the end of our days, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. That's a privilege. Yeah, yeah it is. It, it is. is it is. And you know what the Lord showed me in the midst of that? I was at the keyboard one day, and it was very close to the end of David's life. He was really not doing well, and, and he was shut in. He would stay, sit in this recliner that looks out at this panorama that we have of the Carmel. I was at my keyboard in our, in our living room, and I was playing some chords, and he's sitting in the chair, and he suddenly had a vision. Wow. And he said, I see the Lord coming down from his throne and dancing with someone. And then he saw all this multitude of people, and he said, well, Lord, are you going to dance with everybody? And the Lord said, yes. And as when he shared this week, the hand of God came on me at the keyboard, and I just I wept and wept, and I said, thank you, Lord. You have allowed me to go through this crushing because you're preparing me for the wedding supper of the Lamb. You're refining me. Whoa. You're polishing me. This is like the, the, the final preparations. And I said, and I, and I literally thanked the Lord for the suffering of those days. I mean, it wow. was the worst time of my life, you know. Mm. But it was like, <laughs> Lord, Definitely. you allowed this. You know, and I say yes. You know, I say yes to it. I say yes, wow. you know. And, so and, and, but the reality of that is our destination. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. everything as we embrace the trials... It is. It's the bride making herself ready. Whoa. You know, one of our favorite t shirt, embrace the trials. We need to make that a t shirt. <laughs> yeah. Embrace the yeah. trials. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because it produces life. You right. know, it's it's Whoa. like hard pressed but not destroyed. Yeah. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of the Lord will be manifest. That's what I learned from that season of my life. And I may I never 
May I continue to learn that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. wow. So, <laughs> thank you, Karen. Yeah, so, I'm wow. so glad I could share that because I really want to give hope to people that you know, if if we don't just complain and resist and and we yield to everything that comes our way, the Lord has allowed it. You know, it doesn't mean God gave my husband cancer. No. It doesn't mean I liked it. It was a horrible thing yes. that we were going through. You yeah. know, and and yet every day. He was showing us goodness and mercy, was following us. Yes. Even though, you know, and I was tested on absolutely everything I've ever sung. You know, we sang today, Hodula Dunai Kitov, Kile Olam Chasto, give thanks to the Lord for his good and his and mercy. And, and I remember us sitting in our little kitchen table, uh, you know, about a month before, a couple months before he passed away. And we said, can we really say this right now? Can mm. we say God is good? Can we say his mercy endured? We don't see the answer to our prayer. You know, we were believing up we're to the healing. end. We God, and the whole people praying. praying all over the world, prophesying over us and over him. And, and we really, you know, he's got a prophetic voice. Mm-hmm. We need the voice. And, um, and, and yet that's not what God did, you know. And, and, and God so ministered to mm. me his goodness you know he mm. is a good good father he's perfect in all his ways mm-hmm. that became such reality to me wow. and eternity's and real it, eternity is real and that's why i'm making a new album now that's called shire netzach songs of eternity oh, wow. my last album was called songs in the night Okay, and it was uh, most of the songs I've written have been songs in the night the night <laughs> seasons the trials never end right but songs of eternity there's no night it's all life. It's all life. And I yeah, want that true. reality to Literally. break into people. You know, it's been, it's drawn close to me, you yeah. know, as I've released my husband also, just that, that reality. And, and so I'm just praying that the music is just totally infused with mm. the sound of eternity. That reality will, will bring comfort and hope because it's not about this world. It's a it's, thin veil, isn't it? It is. It's it is. And any, you know, you've been on the verge of, Dying of death many times, times yeah. you know. And, and, you know, <laughs> actually, the and very, and you might have heard this very, very dear brother for the body, Mark Chapinski, passed away two days ago. I actually made my right. first album with Mark in his studio in, his studio in Israel. And, and Hannah was at his funeral. That's why she had to leave us with early. Us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I heard, when I heard the news, and everyone was shocked because it wasn't like my husband where he was ill for a long time and, you, you know, cancer kills. So you, you kind of have to prepare yourself for this. Mm. If God doesn't heal him, he's going to die, you know. But, but in Leah's case, uh, Mark's wife, it was, it was so sudden and so shocking. But when I heard the news, and I was, we were all shocked, I thought, wow, I'm a little bit jealous. You know, it's like, wow, he got to go. He went yeah. ahead. He went yeah. Ahead. So I think my husband. Graduation. Really, my husband's passing is like provoking me to jealousy. You know, it's like, I want to get that prize. We were running the race together. We were on the upward climb, you know. And, and really, and so I, I, I just, I, I feel a new passion to run that race. Come know? on, and Because Karen. it's about the joy that's set before us. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, yeah, and it's real. And you yeah, have so it much. Is. Yeah, that he's still giving you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's yeah. opening up new doors. So, and we're just part of it. And that's the beauty of working together, as you said, so many. A family. Decades. We are really a family. A family. Yeah. That's well, <laughs> David, yeah. David yeah. Yeah. so key to, to be yeah. journeying together. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we you are a family. family. We see we it. We are a feel family. it. And we're part of this huge family. I know. Um, and when yeah. we come, we feel welcome here like oh, family. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. are. You see the kids are. around. It's like. All Yay, the, yeah, I was missing our children, and here well, they came. Here they come, <laughs> and they keep coming. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank we you for you. encouraging us, and and just just being a part yeah, of our one lives. heart, one spirit. It, and, is. Um, it really is. Yeah. We'll put your contacts really down is. under the podcast. They can find you, and when people sure. journey to Israel, yeah, calm to the Carmel congregation. We love it. We come are come the nations. It. We are doors are open. Isaiah day 15. and night, night and day. I mean, we are oh. really oh. moving How's toward twenty four seven. That's We had a Korean team that was here for forty days, for yeah. up until Yom Kippur. They prayed in our Elijah prayer oh. cave. 
12 hours a day, and then they stepped it up to 24 hours. Yeah, there's a cave is, underneath the building from Yes, yeah, there's a cave. Yeah. And, uh, and people are hearing the call to come up to the top of Carmel. You know, it's a very strategic location. This is the highest point. It's, it's, the highest it's a high point. place, you know. It's and the and highest place on this mountain range. Down and his fire yeah. fell, yeah. Yeah. and it's falling again. The Lord and God has there. this place. God has you. Please. God has us. God has you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. This has been amazing. These women, Karen and Mama Rita and Mama Heidi. Oh, my gosh. I'm with the generals of faith right here. This is unbelievable. Little mamas. Did little you enjoy mamas. this podcast? Yes, Write some little co- mamas. Come on, little mamas. Doing such amazing work. Just so, saying yes. Come on. Just saying yes. That's key. That's Just keep saying yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't quit, you win. Come on. <laughs> Leave some comments below. Yeah. We're going to head down to Jerusalem now. So we're going to get some more podcasts coming your way from some other amazing believers down there. So keep tuned in and I hope you enjoy this episode of Iris After Hours. Love you guys. Ciao. Ciao. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.com. You can also text to give. Simply text the amount you'd like to donate to 530-338-3837. Or to speak to someone at Iris Global, call our office at 530-255-2077. Iris Global is an international Christian mission and relief organization with a focus on working amongst the poorest of the poor and those most in need. We hope this podcast has inspired your journey. Thanks for joining us for Iris After Hours.